I'm a trekking pole kind of guy, but when I need a freestanding tent for my ultralight trips, I'm reaching for the Nemo Dragonfly. It's the latest freestanding tent on the market, and what that means is that you don't need any trekking poles to set it up, and it will maintain its shape and structure without any tent pegs in the ground. Starting with what's good about the tent, the first thing I want to talk about is how easy this tent is to set up. All of the corners are color coded, so on the front here we have gray straps on the inner and then gray straps on the fly, and then the, the pole structure on the inside is also gray. Then you move over to the back side, and the pole structure, the fly, and the inner are all neon green, which makes it really easy to make sure that you're not getting things all mixed up and backwards. There's no fly first pitch mode with the dragonfly, which is unfortunate. So if it is raining, you need to set it up really quickly. Otherwise the inner is gonna get all wet, which means that having a tent that is easy to set up is that much more essential. Like I said, it is fully freestanding, so you can set it up and have it maintain its structure without any tent pegs put out. But if you do wanna pull the vestibule out away from the tent, then you need, do need to set at least two tent pegs into the ground. There are a lot of great features with this tent. You have two little kind of cell phone pockets on either side at the head end here, and then you have one big loft pocket right at the top here, which is awesome for putting wet gear, stuffing a down jacket up in there. Whatever you need, it's a big giant loft pocket, and I love those on tents. You also have really easy to use door tie backs, especially for the main door one here. It's a proprietary Nemo system, but is, is really easy to use. And then you have a lot of tie out points throughout the entire tent. That's one of the things that is really good about this tent is its storm worthiness. It takes four tent pegs at each of the four main corners, but then for each door, you can peg out two extra spots. And not only does this add to storm worthiness, but it also means that if you open up the main part of the door, then you still have this little protected area, this little corner here we can touch, tuck under a backpack or something like that, and it won't get wet. The brow pole is wide enough that it goes right up to the edge. If it's raining, straight down, you're okay. If it's raining on any sort of an angle, you are gonna get wet in there because it doesn't overlap a huge amount, but it, it is enough that you can keep the door open a little bit if it is raining. In addition to the eight stakeout points, which is kind of the minimum that you need for a standard pitch, there's also an additional six guy out points. So you can have 14 different stakes staking and guying out this tent, which means that it's gonna perform really well in a lot of wind. And I've had this in some decent wind and it performed phenomenally, especially if you put the back end into the wind, you can have about eight stakeout points all providing structure and support in order to fight off that wind. Another feature related to stormworthiness is how well the material does with rain. So this is the Nemo Osmo fabric, which is a blend of polyester and nylon fibers in order to create a fabric that has all the benefits of nylon, but also all the benefits of polyester. So it doesn't absorb water and then stretch and sag in the rain or high condensation areas, which is amazing. That's the big downside of nylon, but you also get all the strength that nylon provides that polyester kind of has, but not quite as much as nylon. Nemo is also using one of the best coatings. So you need a waterproof coating in order to make the fabric waterproof. It's not inherently waterproof. And on the outside, you have a silicone coating, which really repels water quite well and actually increases the strength of the fabric. And then on the inside, you have a PEU coating, which isn't gonna hydrolysize as much as PU does, or maybe not even at all. We're still waiting kind of on those long-term tests, but also allows them to seam tape the inside so you don't have to seam seal the tent yourself. Having that silicone outer and then PEU inner is probably the best combination out there for tents right now. Weight and size are gonna be big factors with this tent for a lot of people. It's not the biggest tent out there. It's 88 inches long, which is gonna accommodate most people up to about just over six feet, maybe about six and a half feet tall. And then for width, you have an asymmetrical floor shape. So you have 50 inch width at the head end and then 45 in inches of width at the foot end. What that means is that you can fit two wide, 25 inch wide sleeping pads in there, but they have to be tapered because of that narrowing as you get to the foot end. And while for a lot of tents that advertise a 50 inch width, that's an optimistic <laughs> advertisement, it's, it's true with this end. I have two 25 inch pads in there right now. And while it is tight, they do fit. The tent has a decent amount of headroom and more closer to the front of the tent, 41 inches in peak height. 
And because of that brow pull being nice and wide, you do actually have a good amount of shoulder room when you have two people inside the tent. But as for the weight, this tent is very lightweight, especially for a fully free sang tent. Its trail weight is 1.2 kilograms, which is the lightest on the market right now. So that's just for the tent poles, the fly, and the inner. You add a little bit of weight for tent pegs. And if you go with the, the all-in system from Nemo with the bags, the, the poles, the tent pegs, the repair kit, it's 1.4 kilograms. Let's go through the packwizard.com comparables. We have the Big Agnes Copper Spur and then the REI Flash Air. Both tents are getting close to the weight of the Dragonfly, but both weigh quite a bit more. You're probably gonna get a little bit more room and a couple more features with the Copper Spur, but the Dragonfly is gonna be a better bet overall compared to the REI Flash Air 2. All of links to the packwizard.com comparison as well as all three of these tents in the video description. That brings us to what's bad about the tent. There's, there's not a ton, but the first one is price. This tent costs $500 US, which isn't cheap, but it's also probably average for high-end tents like this. Some people are gonna complain about size, but when you're getting down to tents that weigh this much and are fully free sanding, you're gonna be compromising on size. The fact that it can fit two 25 inch wide pads means that it's good enough for me, but if you need something bigger, they do have a three person version of this tent. It's probably gonna be like the two person is the lightest three person fully free sanding tent out there. I also find the tent stakes a little bit annoying. Like I said, it takes eight tent stakes to fully stake it out just in its kind of basic form. That's not including any guy out points, which is a lot of tent stakes and those tent stakes are adding, adding weight into your pack. I wish that the second door tent stake was optional and not 100% needed, but if you take that out, then the door kind of flaps and flops a little bit. And if it is windy, then that's gonna get really annoying. So you kind of do need to stake out all eight of those points. The inner door isn't my favorite as well. It is curved, as you can see here. And I find that as I'm kind of closing it or opening it right along the curve there, it sometimes gets stuck. And that's just kind of a nature of curved door zippers, especially with ultralight zippers. And it's something that I've been very wary of because I think I have to be extremely careful or that zipper is gonna break very quickly. I would prefer if it had two zippers that just we're in straight lines, no curved zippers. I find those a lot easier and a lot more durable. Go check out this video if you want a sleeping pad to pair with your tent. I've tested dozens of sleeping pads and in this video, I share with you guys what the most comfortable ones are in order for you to get the best night's sleep when you're out in the backcountry.